This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Palestinian officials say the death toll from 75 days of Israeli attacks on the Gaza Strip has topped 20,000, nearly 1 percent of the Gazan population. At least 8,000 children are among the dead. On Wednesday, a World Health Organization emergency team reached the Al-Ahli Hospital, which had been northern Gaza's last functioning medical facility where people could undergo surgery. WHO team coordinator Sean Casey says conditions have further deteriorated with the bodies of the dead placed in rows in the courtyard. Patients who've gone weeks without needed surgery and growing rates of postoperative infections due to a lack of antibiotics. What we found here is a hospital that's really almost completely stopped functioning. Two days ago, uh, a number of staff were detained. Um, just last Saturday, uh, we visited Al Shifa and they were telling us how they were sending surgical cases here because Al Athli had some of the only operating theaters left in uh, northern Gaza, in Gaza City, and those are now no longer functional. They don't have specialists, they don't have surgeons, uh, they don't have power, they don't have water, uh, they don't have food. The United Nations Human Rights Office says it's received disturbing information about a summary execution of Palestinians by Israeli forces in Gaza City Tuesday. The U.N. agency reports that during a raid on a building in the Aramel neighborhood, Israeli soldiers allegedly separated a group of men from women and children, then shot and killed at least 11 of the men in front of their family members. Soldiers then allegedly ordered the women and children into a room and either shot at them or threw a grenade into the room, seriously injuring some of them, including an infant and a child. Meanwhile, Israel continues to attack southern Gaza. On Wednesday, a three-day-old infant was pulled from the rubble alive but injured after Israeli strikes flattened residential buildings in Rafah. We saved her life at the last moment. We couldn't see her because of the smoke created by the rocket. So we were looking for her. My cousin carried her outside so she could breathe properly. Three days old, a small baby girl, three days old, choked because of the rocket strikes. The United Nations Security Council has, for the third time this week, postponed a vote on a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and for Israel to allow shipments of food, water, fuel and medicine into the besieged territory. Several Security Council members have expressed frustration with the United States for repeatedly delaying votes and for threatening to once again veto any resolution. Meanwhile, President Biden had just a brief response Wednesday when asked by a reporter about the unprecedented death toll in Gaza. And your reaction to 20,000 dead in Gaza, that death toll reached today, likely to be reached today? It's tragic. French President Emmanuel Macron has criticized Israel's assault on Gaza while repeating his call for a truce leading to a humanitarian ceasefire. On Wednesday, Macron told a French TV news channel, quote, We cannot let the idea take root that an efficient fight against terrorism implies to flatten Gaza or attack civilian populations indiscriminately, he said. France's health minister tendered his resignation on Wednesday to protest an anti-immigrant bill backed by President Emmanuel Macron and approved by a wide margin in the French parliament. The bill makes it far easier for France to expel asylum seekers, set strict immigration quotas, makes it harder for children of immigrants to become French citizens, and delays immigrants' access to welfare benefits by several years. Far-right leader Marine Le Pen has called the amended bill an ideological victory for her party. In Brussels, the European Union has agreed to a new pact on migration and asylum that Amnesty International warned, quote, will set European asylum law back for decades to come and lead to greater human suffering, unquote. The agreement comes after three years of negotiations. It allows for the detention of migrant families, including those with young children, and fast-tracks the deportation of newly arrived asylum seekers. EU Parliament member Malene Bjork said in a statement, quote, in the face of Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine, the EU showed that solidarity with those seeking protection is possible. But instead of building on that experience, the deal just struck will institutionalize and worsen the most repressive practices, mass detention, pushbacks and cruelty at the borders." Unquote. 
Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott chartered a flight Tuesday that brought more than 120 immigrants from the U.S.-Mexico border to Chicago. It's a major escalation of Abbott's policy of transporting asylum seekers to Democratic-led cities and comes just after Abbott signed Senate Bill 4, which makes it a state crime to enter Texas outside of a U.S. port of entry. This comes amidst mounting tensions in Chicago over the arrival of migrants from the southern border and a worsening housing and health crisis that faces them. On Sunday, a five-year-old boy staying at a temporary shelter died amidst a spate of illnesses at the facility. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson is calling for more resources to support migrant families and an end to the political weaponization of the issue. Um, everyone knows that the right-wing extremism in this country has targeted democratically ran cities. And quite frankly, uh, they've been very intentional about going after democratically ran cities that are led by people of color. And their whole motivation is to create disruption and chaos, because that's what this, that particular party has been about. NBC News is reporting Chinese President Xi Jinping informed President Biden last month Beijing plans to reunify Taiwan with mainland China. The message was conveyed as the two leaders spoke on the sidelines of the APEC summit in San Francisco in a meeting intended to ease tensions between Beijing and D.C. The Biden administration reportedly rejected a Chinese request to make a public statement saying it supports the goal of peaceful unification and does not support Taiwanese independence. Though the U.S. supports the One China policy, it maintains cultural and commercial ties with Taiwan and supplies the territory with weapons. U.S. citizens freed in a prisoner exchange with Venezuela were repatriated on Wednesday, while released Colombian businessman Alex Saab landed in Venezuela where he met with close ally President Nicolas Maduro. Saab, who's accused of money laundering via the U.S. and bribery, was granted clemency by President Biden in exchange for the release of 10 U.S. prisoners. Maduro also agreed to free at least another 20 political prisoners. Separately, Caracas also returned fugitive Malaysian defense contractor Leonard Glenn Francis, who's implicated in a major Pentagon bribery scandal. As he welcomed Alex Saab back at a Caracas news conference, President Maduro welcomed the prisoner exchange as a positive step in U.S.-Venezuela relations. Hopefully, the way will be found for a process of respect, equal treatment, and understanding between the United States of America and the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Today, a step has been taken that will hopefully contribute to that path. In Argentina, new President Javier Millet ordered a major deregulation of the national economy Wednesday. The far-right libertarian followed through on his campaign promise, using executive powers to undo or change 300 rules. These include eliminating laws regulating rents and preventing the privatization of state companies. Millet also announced measures to deregulate labor, trade, tourism, pharmaceuticals and other areas. Following the announcement, thousands of people took to the streets in the first public demonstration since his inauguration and his threats to crack down on protests. This is Alejandro Badar, secretary general of the Socialist Workers Movement. I think it is clear that there is a government that is determined to apply a brutal adjustment that has already begun, which has rapidly crushed wages. And in order to make this adjustment happen, they are determined to repress and restrict democratic freedoms. It is unbelievable that a march cannot take place in peace, because these people have taken the political decision to prevent it by violating our constitutional rights. India's parliament voted on a number of key bills Wednesday, including contested criminal reform measures, after more than 140 opposition lawmakers were suspended this week in a major crackdown by the ruling BJP party. Opposition leaders accused Prime Minister Narendra Modi of trying to hobble a new political alliance that's challenging the BJP in next year's elections. Karti Chidambaram of the Opposition National Congress Party warned after the suspensions, India's parliament is, quote, going to resemble the North Korean Assembly. And influential civil rights lawyer, professor and expert on police brutality, Paul Chavigny has died at the age of 88. As a lawyer with the New York Civil Liberties Union, he founded the Police Practices Project and published two books on abusive policing, including the seminal Police Power, 
In 1971 case, Hanchu versus Special Services Division, he successfully challenged the New York Police Department's surveillance of political organizations, which at the time included the Black Panther Party and anti-Vietnam War activists. He went on to write about police violence in other countries, including Brazil, Argentina and Jamaica. As a professor at NYU Law School, he inspired legions of students. Paul Chavigny is survived by his two children, including the filmmaker Katie Chavigny. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.